Hi everyone, it's Gary here from Echidna Sewing, and today we are going to be talking about tensions, um, one of my favorite subjects. And in particular, we're going to be looking at the multi-needle brother PR670 or PR1050 uh, or any of the multi-needle machines really. Um, and today's video is uh, about a post that I saw in one of our communities and uh, I thought it was quite a, a very common topic and one that lots of people get confused on and really there's no need to be confused when it comes to embroidery tensions. So um, I'm going to dig deep into this right now. So, you know, hang in there. You'll learn a lot if you, if you hang with me and um, I'm sure you'll be able to you know, solve most of the tension problems that you might uh, you might think you're having um, with just a little bit of knowledge. Now, the first thing I'm going to say before it's anything really is, it's commonly said on a lot of the chat groups that you know people get on. It's all well-meaning the advice, but anyone who sort of says to you, never ever touch your tensions, um, that's not quite right. You know, every machine on the market has some sort of adjustable tension system. And um, usually in the instruction book, there'll be instructions on how the user, yourself, would be able to adjust that. So tensions are adjustable on pretty much every machine on the market. The reason they're adjustable is because you, you have to sometimes adjust them. And when you think about it, there's so many variables in embroidery. You've got the, um, the thread, the needles, the stabilizer, the fabric, the type of design you're using. Um, all these things contribute to giving you those variable results that you might sometimes see. So just because you um, get a, a tension that you don't think is right, you know, often people go, oh, my machine's failed or, or um, you know, the thread's no good. More often than not, it's just a simple tension adjustment that you are in control of. So that's what we're going to do today is look at the, um, the variables. Now I'm going to uh, right now just pop a, pop a little post up or a, a photograph that was um, put on one of the communities uh, with what is essentially a, a very inconsistent tension. And you'll, you can see when you look at it that the um, it is inconsistent. The bobbin tension doesn't look right. Something looks desperately wrong. Now, on this little image that you can see, I can tell because of the consistently um, bad stitching or bad tension that the problem, and across all the different needles on the machine, the problem is most likely going to be something to do with the bobbin or the bobbin case. So we're gonna sort of you know, hone in on that and explain what would cause that as well. But first things first, I, I sound like a crack record sometimes, but everything starts with your bobbin tension. If your bobbin tension is not set somewhere in the correct zone, then getting everything else to work on your machine is really hard. So let's take a really a, a closer look at how to set bobbin tension. So bobbin tension, um, it's different to needle tension. Obviously on your, your needles, and whether you're on an industrial or commercial style machine like this or a home machine, there's always some level of gauge. You know, there might be a set of numbers or in this case, there's a kind of a little guide on the tension cap that um, will tell you where your tension's roughly set. But there's no such thing on your bobbin case. So let's take a look at the bobbin case on this machine, if I pull it out of the machine. And uh, this is a typical commercial style bobbin case. Um, this is called an L-style bobbin, and right now I've got a plastic-sided bobbin in there with a pre-wound, it's a pre-wound plastic-sided bobbin. The thread's pulling out beautifully. Um, you know, I know the tension on this is set at about 30 grams. Now, how do I know that? Well, very easily, I measured it. And, and I do recommend to anyone who's a serious embroiderer, um, if you have a commercial style machine like the Brother PR, grab yourself one of these little gauges. And I'm gonna show you how this works. This is the TOA electronic tension gauge. I'm gonna turn that on. And um, it, ha it comes with a little adapter in here, allows me to put the bobbin case in. And I do have other more in-depth videos on this guy, but we just pop that into place. And then I can just simply run my thread around here. I hope I keep my hands out of the way. And as I pull that thread, it's around 25, 26 grams, and that's pretty good. I'm very happy with that. So, but what if it wasn't? What if the tension was reading 10 grams or, or 40 grams or something? Then if it was lower than 25 grams, if it was down near 10 grams, I'm typically going to see all my bobbin thread being pulled up to the top of the fabric. If it was high at around 40, 50, 60 grams, sometimes even higher, it's typically gonna mean that your, your stitch is gonna be very tight and your, um, your uh, needle thread will get pulled around and uh, you're not gonna hardly see any bobbin thread underneath. So uh, this is a great way to adjust tension and measure it. And you know to get the correct tension, 
you can actually access the screw here. Again, we do have another video on this tension gauge, but I can adjust it while the bobbin case is in there and get the exact tension that I want. But the reason I want to show you this is I've got that set at around 25 grams. Now, if I take this out and grab another bobbin, so I'm just going to take that thread out of there. I don't want to get anything caught. So that's gone. And I have, and here's a really good example. I have this set of pre-wound colored bobbins that were bought on eBay. And uh, it's probably good value, you know, lovely range of colors there. Now, uh, I've got to be honest, these are A-style bobbins. So I took one of the bobbins, the red one out of this set, which is right there, and I wound half that thread onto an L-style bobbin. Now, it looks, it's just red, it's not white, obviously, it's not like a typical bobbin fill. It looks the same as the thread that we were using to measure before at 25 grams. I'm going to put that in here, and without doing anything, let's measure the tension. So here we go. I'll just try and keep my hands out the way. Wow, look at that. Almost twice the tension. Now, here's the thing. Does that mean it's a bad thread? <laughs> Probably isn't great, but it's still usable, although at 50 grams, it's going to give me a very inconsistent and a very tight stitch. So to make this work, I would just simply adjust the screw on the little, I'll try and do it so you can see it. Adjust the screw down here. Camera guy hopefully can see that. And um, if I just adjust that lefty, remember lefty loosey, righty tidy, I'm just, I'm going blind, I can hardly see it. There we go. So I've taken that out a full half or a half turn. And look at that, I'm now down to 22 grams. So that's a bit closer to where I want to be, maybe a little bit too loose. So I'm just going to nip that up a wee bit more, go back about an eighth of a turn. There, 30, I'm really happy with 30. Now I know that thread will work now, but it wouldn't have worked very well at 50 grams. It would have been too tight. It's not complicated, but you just be, need to be able to measure your tension. That's why these tower gauges are fantastic. So whatever thread I put in here, as long as I'm somewhere around 25 to 30 grams, I know it's going to work quite well. And that makes all the difference. So if you balance the tension to start with, nine times out of 10, you'll find you don't need to touch the top tension. Um, and whatever thread you're using, aim for that 25 to 30 grams on your tower gauge. So let's take a look at uh, how this would actually stitch out. All right, so let's stitch this out. Now I'm going to first stitch um, a, a simple um, column of satin stitching. Uh, in fact, I'm just gonna use the letter I out of one of the alphabets. And I'm going to use that red thread that I just set the tension to 30 on. So um, I'm gonna pop that in the machine correctly. And we're going to pop our hoop in place. So I've got a, quite a few colors up here. I'm going to use probably this gold thread. So I'm now going to go into my fonts menu, choose my standard block font, and I'm just going to get a letter I. The letter I is a great way to check your tension on these machines because it's going to be about five millimeter, a five millimeter wide satin stitch, and that's a really good way to set your, um, your tension. So we'll just go to set, and I'm going to go to edit end. And I'm going to basically take that up to the top so we can see it a bit better, maybe across a little bit. And we'll go to embroidery. Now I want to use needle three, so I'm going to override everything here. I'm just going to say, choose needle three. And let's stitch this out and see what we get. Okay, so that uh, first stitch out is done. Let's take a look at it. Um, looks quite neat and tidy on top. Um, quite neat and tidy on the bottom, although I do think that red thread, I, I could probably have a slightly tighter bobbin tension on that. But even, even that's okay because I've got about 50% bobbin thread showing underneath the fabric and about 25% either side of needle thread. That's kind of within a range that I'd be happy with. But let's put my original thread back in and just see without changing anything what result we'll get. 
Remember, I had to alter the bobbin to suit this red sort of um, coloured pre-wound bobbin that was uh, bought online. So let me find my, there's my original uh, thread, which is the little test thread that we had. And this is a, um, a plastic sided pre-wound bobbin. So we'll pop that in and just double check what tension we're going to get. Remember, we'd adjusted it. Oops, just let me take that out again. I'm all fingers here today. We'll pop that in there. And just sit that in the unit. Okay. Now we're looking for about 30 grams. And 25 would be okay, 35 would be okay, but 30 is kind of where I'm looking for. Wow, that's how much I had to adjust it to suit the red thread. So um, if I was to run this now, and in fact, I will run it now at that, and you'll see the difference in the results. Um, the thing about bobbin tension is it's quite measurable because in, in a sense once you stitch because you'll be able to see the effect of whatever you're doing. So I'll pop that in, let's just get that in there. Now we'll do that same letter I, but this time I'll move it across just a, bit, a smidgen and I'll use the same needle thread. So I'll go to embroidery, we'll change that back to three. Whoops, cancel that, hit that one, that's what I want. Same needle thread, um, haven't adjusted the tension. We've gone from that red bobbin thread, which we did need to adjust um, to the white and we'll see what difference we get. Let's watch this stitch. Okay, so that's finished now. Let's take a look at the result. Remember, we measured the bobbin tension before we stitched this second bar out and it was around 15 grams. So what are we going to get? Looks good on top, right? So there's no dramas there, but have a look underneath. It's almost all bobbin tension or bobbin thread. That's because there's not enough tension on the bobbin. So how do I fix it? I can, I know, I'm, because I measured it, it was 15 grams, I know that's too light. So now I'm going to adjust it back up to about 30 and we'll see what we get. So we just take the bobbin case out of the machine, pop it back into our little toe gauge, pull the thread up around, follow the little guides, and there are instructions with these gauges. So there we go, 17, 16 grams, which is what we um, expected. Now I'm just going to adjust the little screw down here. Um, I know you can't see me doing this, but it's there. We'll just go about a half a turn and see what we're going to get. And let's have a look. 29.30, happy as, happy as Larry with that. So I'm just going to cut that thread off, take the bobbin case back out, pop that in my machine. Now you notice I haven't adjusted anything to do with needle threads yet. I've just left them where they are. And nine times out of 10, if your bobbin tension's right and the rest of your machine is running the way it should be, you rarely need to touch your tensions. All right, so let's move that across a bit and stitch it again. Go back to embroidery. I want needle three. I want the same needle again. And let's see what happens now. Okay, so let's take a look at how this one has stitched. Remember, this is now having readjusted our bobbin case back to where we started with the white bobbin thread at around 30 grams. Looks good on top. Let's have a look at the back. Um, looks really good. Uh, pretty happy with that. Probably I would like to see a little more needle thread coming around to the bottom, but here's the thing. Now that I know my bobbin tension is set kind of at, at a really good level at 30 grams, now I'm just going to make that final adjustment on my needle thread tension. And all I need to do now is I want more needle thread coming around, which means I'm just going to take my needle three tension and I'm just going to loosen that a wee bit. And that's going to let more needle thread come around. Now for me, I like to run the lightest tension I can because I don't like a puckered effect or that, that tightness in some embroidery. So by loosening that needle tension off a bit, and the thing with these needle tensions, you can turn it you know, a few times, it's not gonna make a great deal of difference. It's really a fine tuning adjustment on a, a multi-needle machine like this. So we'll just see how that goes. Let's stitch that out again and see what result we get. So I'll just pop that back in. Remember our bobbin tension is on 30 grams. I know that's a good level, so I'm happy with it. And uh, we'll just go to embroidery. I'm going to, whoops, I needed to move that first. Let's just do that. Move that across a wee bit more. 
That will do, go to embroidery. I want the same needle again, so we're going to go to needle three. And we're just going to stitch that out. Okay, let's take a look at this. And that's even a little bit better. I'm, I'm really happy with that. I got about 50% bobbin thread and 50% needle thread, 25% either side. Um, I don't need to run it any lighter, but, but here's the next thing. That thread is giving me that tension, but I could use a different color thread or a different brand of thread, and I might get a different tension. But again, I now know that it's not my bobbin because my bobbin is set perfectly at 30 grams. So any adjustment I might want to make now, I can easily do on my needle tensions. And I think that's a really important thing to remember with your uh, tension settings. Um, and again, we, you know, we help people on a daily basis with getting their tension set right. And, and often, you know, uh, I mentioned at the start of this video, it's the first thing people think when their tension isn't perfect is there must be something majorly wrong with the machine. It's rarely a fault with the machine. It's almost always a user-defined adjustment to get your tension set correctly. So um, if you can start with a good, the correct bobbin tension, then you can just fine tune your needle tension. Um, some people are very much too pedantic with the tension. So, um, you know, as long as you're in a, a kind of a good range and, and you've got your needle thread pulling around, you know, nicely to the underside of the fabric, then that's what you're really looking for. Things that can cause the, the variations in your, your tension, again, once you know your bobbin tension is correct, is definitely different brands of thread. They will sometimes have different characteristics, different tendencies. Thread also doesn't have an infinite shelf life and, and it will eventually dry out. So um, most thread is lubricated with a silicon treatment during the manufacturing process. And if that silicon, that lubrication dries out, the thread will often pull tight and give you a really tight stitch. So, you know, silicon spray is very good for, for solving that. Um, it will not hurt your machine. If you spray your thread with a, a light coating of a good quality food grade silicon spray, it won't hurt your machine. And uh, in fact, you know, in the clothing industry, we use silicon all the time on threads to, um, to some, sometimes actually get some different applications working at all, you need to use silicon. Um, but uh, your thread variations will usually be because of, you know, different brands, different colors, different types of threads, rayon versus polyester. Um, but again, you can control that with your tension dials at the top, but you can't do anything until you know your bobbin tension is somewhere in the right zone. Now, getting back to the, the photograph we showed you that was posted on the community. And, and it had a very, in, or a very consistent um, uh, inconsistency, if you want to call it that. Very often, that kind of thing is caused by one of two things. A, a bobbin that is actually faulty, or in other words, um, here's, here's a very old plastic-sided bobbin I found, and uh, it, it's, it's a pre-wound. It's had it. The plastic is all deteriorated. This is probably 20 years old, this bobbin. Um, so make sure that the bobbin you're using is good. So that one obviously would cause all sorts of grief. Uh, the other thing that can happen sometimes, the cardboard sided bobbins that are often used, the pre-wounds, are quite good, very effective. Sometimes, however, the cardboard can swell. And what happens there is if you take a, let me take this bobbin case out of here, and I'll show you with this pre-wound magnetic bobbin, which is in fact a magnetic, magnetized cardboard side, and um, I'm going to actually forcibly sort of wreck that a bit, manhandle it. I've actually pulled the cardboard slightly out of shape, and hopefully camera guy might be able to see that there. Um, if you manhandle these bobbins too much, you can actually get the, the cardboard out of shape. Now, if I put that bobbin, case, bobbin in the bobbin case, I can, I can feel it's pulling through okay there. But if I was to put this on a flat surface, which is equivalent to putting it into the, the basket of the machine, I'm wondering if camera guy can catch me if I put this down on the, on the table here. Uh, hopefully camera guy can see it, yep. And if I go to pull that now, while I'm forcing the bobbin case down the table, I can feel there's a real drag on it now that, that shouldn't be there. And that's because I've pulled the, um, I've actually pulled the cardboard, the magnetized cardboard out of shape. Now, if you have these bobbins and uh, cardboard bobbins or the magnetic sided bobbins and you've and it's not working correctly for you, here's a little tip. Just peel the cardboard off because then you have a 
sideless pre-wound bobbin. And I can now put that in there and I can tell you that will work perfectly. So no drag at all and that will work absolutely fine and dandy. So don't throw them out, just recycle them like that. Um, a lot of people also have a tendency to rewind or reuse the plastic sided pre-wound bobbins. I really don't recommend that because those bobbins are the cheapest of cheap bobbins. They're a one use bobbin and they're wound in a controlled environment and um, they're usually pretty darn good. But the minute they're uh, you empty it and then go and rewind it. If you if your machine winds, uh, you know the bobbin thread too tight, it can actually swell the bobbin. So a swollen bobbin will actually cause a very inconsistent bobbin tension and can cause thread breaks and and just a really bad result. So don't use plastic sided uh, pre wound bobbins once you've um, used all the thread that was on there. So um, that's pretty. Oh, the other the other thing too, uh, these machines. Uh, the PRs and a lot of commercial machines do come with steel-sided or metal-sided bobbins, and they're fine. They do tend to, for me, I'm not, I'm not a fan of the, the steel bobbins. They do tend to get a bit of a bobbin overspin, and um, as you're running at speed, uh, the bobbin continues to spin um, once you come to a slowdown, and that can cause some little inconsistencies and tension and even some broken bobbin threads from time to time. So I prefer to use pre-wounds. Um, or a plastic L-style bobbin. Um, metal bobbins would be my last, my last choice, but you know, you can use them. I'm just not a fan of them. Um, the big thing here though, is, as I mentioned before, is this, this ring of pre-wound bobbins. The thread on here, like it's, it's okay, but it's only just okay. And um, I would bet if we sort of tried the different colors, we'd get totally variable tensions on our bobbins. So, I personally wouldn't do that. Uh, people often say, but if I want to match a color on my bobbin, if you're doing lace work, for instance, it's okay to wind your embroidery thread onto your bobbin. But again, just check that your tension's going to be okay because it will be different to what you've been running as whatever your normal bobbin thread is. And, and the best way to do that, with a gauge. We do also have the little spring gauge that you can use, and I can quickly show you how this works. So if we pop our bobbin back in, let me just get the, um, the bobbin I was using. Now, it will give you a slightly different reading because by measuring the bobbin while the bobbin is in the machine, we do get more tension, more drag on it by pulling the thread back out through the needle plate. So to do this, I'm just going to go to needle one. So let's go down here and go back to needle one. I'm going to grab my needle thread and I'm just going to turn my hand wheel and draw my bobbin thread up through to the top of the needle plate. So the spring gauge is pretty good, but it's not as accurate as the electronic tower gauge. And all I do now is just tie a little loop in that thread there. Now, the, the way the spring gauge works, hopefully camera guy can see this. There's a little measuring or, or um, indicator there on zero grams. And the amount of force that's taken to pull that down is how we measure. So if I take that little loop of thread that I've just created, I'll get rid of that red thread, I don't need that. Put that in there. Now camera guy's gonna have to follow me here. And I'm pulling that out. And that's setting in around 35 grams. So it's, it's just showing slightly more tension and that's because we're pulling the thread at right angles through the needle plate. So it just puts a little bit more drag on it. It's, it's better than having nothing. It's just not as um, accurate and uh, easy to use as the tower gauge. So can't recommend it highly enough to have a, um, uh, a tension gauge for your machine. Okay, another reason for an inconsistent tension can be a damaged bobbin case. So let me explain what I mean by that. So this bobbin case here is a, um, a good bobbin case out of the, the PR machine. And this bobbin case is a similar bobbin case out of an industrial embroidery machine. They're very, very similar, but this one has actually been dropped and damaged. So let me show you what I mean. If I take this bobbin, and this is just a pre-wound um, bobbin, and if I pop that into the machine, as I turn that, or into the bobbin rather, as I turn and uh, pull that thread and turn the bobbin, it, sm it flows very, very smoothly. And that's because it's perfectly round, everything's great, that bobbin case is in good shape. Now, this bobbin case, as I said, not exactly the same bobbin case, but it's very, very similar. It looks okay to the naked eye, if you have a look at it, but it has actually been dropped and it's slightly bent on this point right here. 
So if I put this bobbin in, I can even feel it as I push it in. It's a bit tight to get in, it just doesn't fall in. Now it's in, and as I pull this thread, it, it even broke the thread. So this has been damaged fairly badly. Um, I'll try that once more. There we go. So as I pull it, it's really stiff to pull at certain points. It just gets a bit tight. And that's because there's a slight bit of damage on that point of the bobbin case right there. It was dropped on a hard floor. And, and if you do that, that bobbin case is completely history. You need to throw it out. Good reason to have a spare bobbin case in your uh, stash of supplies. So again, just in summarizing this and, and you know, that whole topic and discussion about, you know, my tension's no good, my machine needs service. I have seen so many machines over 40 years get brought into um, our, our workshops or other workshops or, or service centers going, you know, my machine must need servicing because my tension's no good, when all that's needed is a little bit of knowledge and an acceptance that you are in control of tension and if, if you can adjust it, uh, often you're going to find that there's nothing wrong with your machine, it's just the variables of embroidery, just needed you to pay a little bit of um, uh, attention to the, the tension itself, Make be game enough to make a small adjustment, knowing that you can't break anything as long as you know what you're doing. And um, you'll save yourself money, and you'll save yourself a lot of frustration, and you'll get better results. Remember, we are always here to help, so if, you, if you're not sure, get in touch with us, um, talk to us, send us a picture of what's happening, get on our communities, do whatever, um, and we'll certainly guide you through. But don't be scared of tensions and they are something that you have to control and adjust, and they're not there just for the technicians. Um, I think that's the biggest message I've got to get across here. Anyway, hope that helps, and um, happy embroidering.